Tim Hester. Tim, 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 Tim. Can you hear me, Tim? Yep. Whoever's talking, I hear you. Well, I know you can hear me, but can Tim hear me? Tim. Yes. Oh, there he is. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Reverend. What's going on? <laughs> Got a question about that uh, about flying or the, the young Eagles thing. Saturday? Uh, 17th, whenever that is. Okay, 17th. I thought you told me the 16th, and I got to look at that. Yeah, right. yeah. 17th, 17th. Uh -huh. All right, and uh, I'll be going over this week, and uh, if everything works out with my belly, I will be more than happy to uh, slide, slide by and see. And uh, we're trying to get, I talked to the assistant principal at Pasta Leon about getting us a, a bus for that Saturday. Make a country run, you know, uh, start a PDL, pick up PD, uh, Bethlehem, pick up Pasta Leon, uh, not Bethlehem, pick up Poplar Springs, and then head down to the airport down Poplar Springs Highway. What do you think? Sounds good for me. It's a little bit more convenient. You know, I don't know how many people we have that are interested. Yeah, I've got. I've got to walk with, uh, I'll be sending those out this evening, the uh, Young Eagle Program uh, uh, papers. Okay. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, if it's not Bells, it's the Mickey McDonald's people doing their announcements. <laughs> Oh, Dave. Avon calling. More Avon calling. Barbara, you behaving? Of course. Yeah. I wouldn't let you know. <laughs> I know. Hi, Hillary. It's Ray. Yeah. Hi, Ray. How are you? <laughs> good, good. How are you? Good. <laughs> Hello, Hillary. How are you, Jose? How you doing? Good. How's everything with you? It's going great. Uh, we got 15 students. Uh, the coach is doing a marvelous job with it, setting them up, keeping them running. And uh, we deeply appreciate that uh, simulator you sent over. The kids love it. Okay. <laughs> All they want to do is play with the helicopters and the little P-51 models and so forth. That's awesome, and, and but I, and everything's working well. Yes, ma'am. Everything is going real well. Yeah, we get all the drivers. We have all the drivers. Uh, the the student group. We have fifteen, and uh, we have at least seven or eight that have made application to Embry Riddle. All of the employees. Uh, some looking for ROTC scholarships and some coming straight in. Uh, two good students that are coming regardless. That's great. And have you had a chance to have an admissions, um, either admissions or Buck Bernie come and visit? Uh, What's that? Uh, the, yeah. Uh, uh, admissions? Yes. Yeah, admissions person, person come, over. come over. Yes, indeed. Yeah, because Buck, uh, do you, are, do you know Buck? I think Buck Bernie. He's also doing kind of the the marketing angle. So if someone from admissions can't get there or the time you want, then you can always ask him. Yeah. It, yeah. We had the admissions person came a day late. There, there was a miscommunication with yeah, probably from our end, from, most likely. But yeah. she came over and met with three. That I'm gonna bring some students over for the open house on the 24th. Okay. And I'll be there. I'll be at in Daytona Thursday and Friday. 
this Thursday and Friday. Awesome. Um, well, we can meet up if you, I mean, I don't know if you need to say hi or if you want to do something. Have yeah, I'll be, well, I'll be at the, um, at the homecoming stuff on uh, Friday. So uh, if you're around there, I'll see you there. Okay. We're good over here, though. Good. Well, if you don't need me, that's totally okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'll start, uh, well, 4.03. So I really don't have much to say. I just wanted to kind of get a feel for how everybody's doing, if anyone needs anything, like best practices, things that maybe have worked or have not worked. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put everyone on mute and we'll just talk for maybe 10, 15 minutes. And then John Martin has kind of a little presentation lesson thing. And we'll learn some things about helicopters. And then if you don't have any questions or comments, we'll, we'll call it a day. I'm just muting everyone. If you want to unmute yourself, then on the bottom left, you can just unmute. And um, so registration is over. We know the ad drop period is done. So administrative stuff is pretty much on a, a wind down. And I know we're all kind of at different stages of the lessons. I know some of us are doing AS120, some are doing the AS121, some are doing more or different ones. So I know we're all kind of on like different boats, but I know that if we have something that works really well or something that doesn't, that we could we can work with each other and that would, would be good. So I'm gonna call on you like students. <laughs> uh, and it's just going to be the order. So, Jose, you are up first. And you have two minutes to discuss your the best thing and the not so best thing that you've encountered. But, Jose, you're on mute. So, you're going to have to unmute yourself. So bottom left hand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got you. Uh, okay. Okay. Yes. okay. Now yes. um, we have ten very excited students, and uh, those ten uh, seem to be definitely headed toward Embry Riddle in different capacities, and uh, the year has gone very well with the supplies we've gotten, and uh, our clients. Uh, uh, pardon me? Using Glime. Using Glime, again, uh, the coach is the tech specialist here, and he is good. Uh, Citrix app seems to cause our students the greatest difficulty. Hmm. Uh, other than that, getting on Ernie and Canvas has gone very well. We're still having just little minor tweaking where after they complete an AO assignment, uh, we like them to load it up to our records with Canvas. Some are still having trouble there. They send, they send them to a document and then they email them. But other than that, the year has been going very well and uh, very impressed to the student group. So that's about it I, that I can contribute. Good. Okay. Um, let's see. If you need assistance with Citrix, anything in particular, I can help you. But, I mean, you guys are smart guys. You can handle it yourself. But if you need some <laughs> guidance, then then I can, I'll try my best to help you. Yeah, it's mostly with the MacBooks. The Chromebook app was easy, the Citrix app. I, I was able to get the Citrix app onto um, their Gmail account, and so that worked out well. So they have to go through it straight through. But if anybody else is running into that problem, I found out you have to copy-paste the address into the Citrix app. Then it will automatically boot you to the proper place. You know what I'm saying? Where it says apps, eral, zen app. you got to copy-paste just the right amount of that in order for it to work. 
because on a Windows based computer, it's no problem. You can download Citrix, but on a Chromebook, which is what we're using, it becomes a, a, a little bit of a hassle. But I think we've, we've worked it out. Once they get the Citrix app on there, then they put the address in and puts them onto it. Um, so it's not, it's not too bad. Uh, we'll see. We got the first final assignment due in two days. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Okay, cool. Okay. Thank you. So yeah. we'll move on. Um, let's see. Franklin County. That's your. That's your underscore. I'll unmute you if you want. Okay. Hi. Can you hear? No, I, I unmuted you. Do you not have sound? I don't know. Okay, we'll come back to you. <laughs> okay, who has Okay, now? Yeah. Okay, so it must be a different button on mine than it is for you guys, okay. Um, okay, so you need a positive that's happening with us. So, well, um, I'd say that for, for, for Franklin County and uh, the students that are involved here have really uh, enjoyed doing the flight sims, uh, and, and that seems to be an exciting thing for them. Uh, the difficulty I'm having with that, not being the instructor, but the assistant instructor is, um, I myself have not become proficient at doing a flight simulation in the pattern. And so supervising them, uh, making sure that they're actually executing it in order to do a go around uh, has been difficult for me. Uh, and I do find the students occasionally going uh, they're so adept at it, they go off in directions. You know, they're they're um, interacting with one another. Uh, they're they're engaging in an airplane that's not necessarily the one the instructor wants them to use. That kind of thing, which I mean, isn't all that bad for just some uh, you know rough learning activities. But it's important that they demonstrate a go around, and um, the lab's not really set up well. For that, um, I'd have to change the camera in order to get one of the students visible to per to see them doing a flight simulation, and um, and of course he's not physically here, so it does it does create some problems here in the classroom trying to you know work with that. Yeah. But, uh, but they're, certainly, they're certainly enthusiastic about it, and uh, we do have one of our students who is looking to enroll at Emory-Riddle, and uh, so there's some there's real enthusiasm in the class. So. And who is your uh, counterpart? Professor Hester. Tim, you there? Maybe. I thought he was. Because on... If you do Zoom, do these, um, the simulator computers, do they have internet access? Yes. Because then if you do a Zoom, you can share your screen. And so then whatever is on the student's screen in the simulator, they can see. Right, but I can't do a Zoom with Professor Hester you know, that's one do, but I don't, but how do I get the students on their computers to do like what? I think, Hillary, more than anything else, it has to do with bandwidth down there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hillary, it's, it's all about the bandwidth. But I was planning on going uh, about a week ago and doing a private one-on-one -on -one flying lesson with them, and I, I hope to do that within the next couple of weeks. I was... Uh, Anyway, been sick, but uh, we're back at it now. And uh, but everything is going well. Miss Paula is doing an excellent job for us. Good. 
Okay, because what I end up doing, because I only have two computers in some of my rooms, so I end up kind of doing a little more one-on-one -on -one and just maybe for five or ten minutes out of class, you know, uh, in the beginning or the end of class. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if you want to, I'm not sure how many students there are, nor how much, like, jam-packed you, how jam-packed you are, but that might be an option temporarily. We have 10 students, and uh, all of the students have access to a yoke and a computer to do it. So we've been doing two days a week, and one day they have that really to doing the flight sims. So it tends to be, you know, several of them doing it all at once. And maybe I need to just cut it back and say, okay, we're going to do this one at a time with my observation. Yeah, so, just until they, they get the hang of it, maybe. Yeah, maybe so. That might work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, doesn't hurt to try. Yep. Cool. Well, thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Heather, are you there? Maybe not. How about Barbara? Oh, wait. Heather just got online. Sorry. Oh. Barbara, you're on the Okay, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, just we can't see you, but that's fine. Well, that's because my camera is pointed one direction, my computer somewhere else. No worries, no worries. <clears throat> yeah, so it's going well. We have 18 students, um, all enrolled, y'all that good stuff done. Um, we still do not have the flight simulator set up because the first version did not work, and I've just not been able to get through, you know, trying the new version yet. But they have not tried that. Okay, and how, is there something that's going well for you, like in particular, or? Yeah, I mean, we honestly, uh, you know, just do a lecture, and they're uh, about chapter, end of chapter three in the pilot's handbook. Uh, we don't have any seniors, so we don't have anyone enrolling yet. Uh, we've had some good speakers and have some uh, good field trips play into a flight line and um, those kinds of things. Great. Cool. Well, thanks, Heather, um, unless you would like to add anything. Oh, I'm good. Okay. All right, Barbara, are you ready? I'll unmute you, Barbara. You are unmuted. But I can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. I was pressing the button, but I... Anyway, um, everything seems to be going well. I have seven 10th grade students enrolled in AS120 with Mr. Hester. And um, he's been doing lectures three times a week. And he's actually made it over here in person twice this semester, which I think is great. Uh, I am working on getting the flight simulator software loaded onto the computers in the computer lab, but I don't have any computers in my classroom. So it's difficult to get to the computer lab because during my planning period, they have other students in there working. So, um, and it seems like I can get, like the first time I try to download it, I had all seven computers going at the same time, but only one would take like it would get bogged down or something and then yesterday I was in there I got four computers going and only two of them would take so now I only need two more computers so hopefully by Friday I can get that going and then we can go in the computer lab and work with that they've been working on it one-on-one -on -one in my classroom and they love it of course um, some of them already know it I have one student who had it at home already so he's pretty familiar with the box pattern and all that good stuff and um, they're very excited about the sea perch they're ready for it to get here and then um but yeah everything's going well they would like to see some hands-on stuff you know that's the only negative thing i guess i can say but it, that's not really negative you know i don't look at it as negative it's just there's a lot we're in chapter three there's a lot of stuff to get through they have to take the midterm exam tomorrow so they're being patient you know with that but and mr hester's really good about he's going to get me the materials for the hot air balloon and the uh, the glider, the chucker. And so hopefully in the next couple of weeks after the midterm, we can do that. 
Cool. What I usually do for, I try to do as much hands-on as possible. And so then what I have the students do is I have them bring in like recycled material. So cardboard boxes, you know, uh, like empty toilet paper rolls and that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Bags. So things that nobody has to buy, but it's just kind of laying around and mom and dad say it's okay to bring in. And then that's what I usually have the students build stuff out of. So whenever I get like shipments or cardboard boxes, I keep them, break them down, and then I bring them into class. So okay. when we have like a decent amount, I usually have some project. So like make a, make a small airplane and then make, you know, one five times bigger and it has to be able to hold something or, you know, it has to be able to fly and not totally wreck, or, you know. Right, right. Yeah, and we have a lot left over from what we did last year. So um, it's just a, it's a matter of finding time because between the pep rallies and the volleyball games that happen during our, our class time, you know, he, Mr. Hester's doing the best he can with what he's got, and I'm doing the best I can with what I have. So it's just, you know, we have interruptions and stuff. Yeah, totally <laughs> understand that. And that's why I tell the students, be patient. It'll happen. <laughs> Good. Okay. Well, if you need anything in particular to me, you can always email or, or call. Okay, I will. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. Joe, you want to go next? Sure. Hi, Hillary. Hi. Uh, things with me are just fine. My classes are going well. Uh, I've got about a dozen students became Young Eagles last month with the local EAA chapter. I'll probably have another dozen this month. Um, also this Saturday, all of my students, all, geez, 80 of them probably, will volunteer their time to a local uh, grass strip fly-in called the Buck and Fly-in. And interestingly enough, it's a fundraiser for a, an aviation scholarship. And the last time, the last couple of times they've been rewarded or awarded, they've gone to an Ember Riddle student that has uh, gone off from here. So it's a, uh, uh, it's a good, uh, up, it's a great little fly-in, generally about 40 little airplanes. It's a beautiful little grass strip. Uh, they do a little breakfast. There's a lot of booths. Um, and plus it helps the kids with the volunteer hours. Um, in the classroom, um, all, all my simulators are going fine. Um, in my classroom itself, I've got six dream flyers as well as four elites. And then we go off to a computer lab to do the flight, uh, Microsoft flight, uh, X stuff. So those are going well. Um, today they brought in their homemade kites. Uh, so that was kind of a hands-on, uh, you know, build it out of anything you can find in your garage or your neighbor's garage sort of thing. Um, so a lot of hands-on stuff in the classrooms. Other than that, uh, one question I have for, from you, or for you, uh, with the open house at Embry Riddle coming up on the 25th of this month, will the academy have a little booth or some way to uh, um, meet our students that come over? Other than that, my classes are fine. I will look into that. Um, we are starting an alumni club on campus. So I think this might actually be a really good opportunity for them to say, hi, I was in your shoes once, and now I'm here, and this is what I think about it. So I will look at that, because I don't think we have anything particularly planned. What usually happens is all the families are welcome to explore the campus. There's a bunch of tours going on, and then usually the departments set up some type of either meeting or discussion or panel, something like that. Um, I'm quite sure that Gates doesn't have anything set up just yet, but I will look into that. I like that. I think it would be very appropriate for Gates to have a little booth there or, or uh, to at least uh, um, for, for their Gates students to come up and identify themselves. And, and it might be a nice time if they had a t-shirt to give them or that sort of thing. Yeah, I totally agree. Thank you. Good idea. I like it. All righty, Jeff, you ready? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, this is Jeff. Uh, I'm in Gabby in Tallahassee for everybody that doesn't know me. 
Uh, we just started this program last year, and uh, Hillary, you saw what we had to uh, offer. Here. War Eagle. Big, yeah, War Eagle, Tim. <laughs> I saw your uh, your banners in the background. I think we need to work on the team a little bit more this year. <laughs> anyway, anyway uh, uh, that room you saw, Hillary, our garage, it used to be a um, car garage. We got it up and going uh, with the um, wind turbine, the wind tunnel. The two simulators are working. Um, I've got a classroom separate. We don't have our laptops. That's probably the big drawback is just getting the spin up with the laptops that we don't have. So the kids don't have, we were waiting to get them started on Glime online until we had the laptops because we thought we'd have them, but we don't have those yet. So we don't have dedicated computers other than ones in the simulator. That's probably our biggest drawback. We had our first student accepted to Embry-Riddle um, last week. That was Allie Blakely. She's the only female in the class. Um, and she's really smart. She'll do really well in the program, I think. Um, great, great students here. Really smart. Really impressed with the quality of the kids that are coming out. Um, the one question I do have, Hillary, uh, uh, interns. Uh, they've asked if I would like an intern from Florida State, a teacher intern. Is that a problem with Embry-Riddle um, for, for intern teachers to go through the program with teachers like myself? To be honest, I don't see a problem, but I will ask, I guess Art would be the one, um, either Art or Colleen, just to confirm if there's a, a conflict of interest, I guess. It's an FSU, you said, or what was the? Yeah, the, the, the FSU. Two students uh, typically come through here. We have about probably nine or ten a year through the school. And they just intern, you know, they learn the basics of, they, they teach the classes um, with my oversight if, if I get an intern. I haven't, they haven't decided if they're going to send me one, but I thought I'd ask. Okay. Because, I mean, it's not like we're, I would go at the point of we're not literally giving them the information. You're still sh overseeing it. You know, yeah. you're not giving them a blanket. Here's all of our information from Memory Riddle. You're maybe giving them a little bit to teach or something like that. But I'll I'll double check because we don't want to. Okay, and obviously I'll be there. It's not like they can teach the class without me being present anyway. So. Yeah. I have okay. a suggestion. Uh, when we've had that situation in the past, not with Embry Riddle, um, but for example, I teach several different things. I teach math, technology, and science. <laughs> so when the intern came in and it wasn't, let's say, they were only math, they didn't teach my phys physics course. They went and interned um, during that class period with a teacher across the hall. So during that specific class period, if it's a t or two or however many classes there are, sometimes they'll allow you to share. And you would still be the um, supervising teacher, but they can teach with another teacher during that class period um, is what they've allowed us to do. A thought. Definitely. Thanks. Okay. Well, since you're talking, do you want to keep going, Amanda? Sure. I came in late, so I'm not a hundred percent what I'm supposed to be reporting on. I have, uh, after listening to everyone else, um, I have 13 students enrolled in the AS 120 four seniors, seven juniors, and, a, and two sophomores. They didn't want to overload our sophomores with testing this year until they could see how the program worked itself out. Um, they're stuck on biology right now. Um, we have the flight simulator software, thanks to Mr. Hester. Um, we have run it on one computer. We do have all of our joysticks now. But to be honest with you, we haven't had a whole lot of time to really get into the sims and see how well they work, and I haven't tried to load it on different computers yet. We just had homecoming last week, and we have a midterm coming up tomorrow, so we're, <laughs> our kids are a little, oh, so am I, but um, anyway, so homecoming is the devil, <laughs> but um, yeah, now I need a vacation from homecoming. Um, is there anything else I should be reporting on? Just a high and a low kind of thing, so like what's been going really well, what can possibly use some work? Um, everything's gone relatively smoothly. Um, Professor Dean's done a great job explaining the material to the kids. They're a little overwhelmed with the AOPAs and the papers and everything. They're, they're, it's a lot coming at them right now. They're just not accustomed to it. Um, but they seem to be adjusting well. So I think it was just the amount of material at one time 
Um, but they've, they've seemed to have done well. Having the Wednesdays and Fridays to discuss things and catch up. And I am in a computer lab, which is good. Um, I have a benefit that a lot don't, uh, being the only technology teacher here. So um, I, I don't really have any lows yet. When I start these flight sims, we might, but because I don't know how to run them. <laughs> but other than that, I think we're good. Great. Okay. I can handle that. Thanks, Amanda. Um, Dave, you want to go? Sure. Well, I think the high part would be the, the simulator so far. That's been a wonderful carrot that dangles in front of their head every day. So that's been a real great motivator. And uh, once the everyone was registered, that once that headache was over, um, and, and getting the simulator working after several, several hours of copying files and reinstalling disks and all that wonderful stuff to find out it was just clicking on the wrong icon. Um, but other than that, it was, it's good. I'm glad that everything's finally going now. So now it's just wait, all the, all the fun stuff starts happening. Yeah. All the real teaching, hopefully, you know? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks then. Um, let's see. Joe W. Winkowski, you ready? Oh, hi, hello. Hi, you're good. All right, thanks. I'm Joe Winkowski, Clearwater High School in Pinellas County. And uh, yeah, things are going great. Uh, we have roughly about 20 kids uh, spread between two classes of AS120. And uh, John up in Sun Lake helped talk me through getting uh, X-Plane 10 all set up. The trick is you have to install it, like they says, on the desktop. So uh, I had uh, my techie guys help me out. And uh, I actually have administrative privilege on my local machines. So I created a user account uh, for like pilot matching up with the with the login of the computer and then gave a generic login. They can't change the password. They can't change the the password doesn't expire and uh, they only have user privileges and I have it installed to the desktop, pinned to the to the stat task bar and it works pretty works pretty great. What I recommend one if anybody's configuring is on the yoke, if you guys have the yoke, you can configure the buttons to look uh, look to the right ninety degrees and look to the left ninety degrees. So you can simulate, I'm looking outside my window, and then you have another button on the, I'm using the C1 and uh, C2 buttons right on the yoke handle on the, on the right hand side. And then you can configure B1 and B2 to look forward your cockpit and look behind. It's just a little recommendation for the people flying the patterns. Um, let's see. I did have a couple questions. With uh, the sandbox we're listed as a student, I notice there are things that pops up like assignment notifications. Is that for us to complete or is that? No. That's what I, the setup, go ahead. That's just because um, TK, the one who is really the professor of that course, he's just assigning his students those and we're, okay. we're involved in that, so yeah. So. Oh, very good, just, just give us some more information, some more feedback, okay, very good, okay. And then uh, I would, uh, the request would be probably be, if we can get some training with the wind machines or the wind tunnels. So we have one, and I believe a Sun Lake has one. We haven't had a chance to get them up and run and use them. And then they mentioned uh, possibly if we can get 3D printers and work on maybe creating airfoils to use inside the wind tunnels. If that's something down the road. And then a, a question with uh, the open house. I do have at least one student attending from Pinellas. Is it possible they get a tour of the flight line and can they get a, a free ride along as an Emory Riddle student? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna address the first one. So the wind tunnel. Okay. Um, Pitsco, I have an email which I will forward to you. I'm calling them and um, it depends what day, they may or may not be helpful. So I got an email and they want a whole bunch of information 
from you as to what would you particularly like to do with it? What have you done so far? So I'll send you that email so that you can get in contact with them directly because I have two wind tunnels and I use it, but I only use it in the mechanical sense. I am not actually taking any software information from it. So I am not using it to its full potential because my computers don't run that program. So they will walk you through that. Um, 3D printers typically are only for engineering classes. And then the last thing with the open house, um, they have, they'll have students there that will give them tours and they could, you know, just kind of hop along on a tour. And is your student 18? I, I believe so. Close. He's a senior. I can double check. Okay. So either 18 or has parent permission. Then yeah, he'll be with his parents. Yeah. Then they'll be able to sit in the back of an aircraft. Nice. Very cool. I'd be excited. And is it okay if they uh, like snap pictures on the flight line oh, and take yeah. a film and like bring back some pictures so we can kind of advertise and promote okay. that? Yeah, they have just a little bit of a policy as, you know, to where you walk and not, you know, like walk with your cell phone out. But, but if it's a camera versus a text machine, then, yeah. And is that something he could possibly use if he had him, uh, pictures of him in front of uh, some planes to use an audio book or something? Is that something? Of course. Can yeah, okay. definitely. Okay. They, oh, yeah. Very good. And then the only thing that they kind of – want to make sure of is if there's a person in that picture that that person has permission to be photographed and like a media release form kind of very good okay okay very good and then someone mentioned the the glim online is that mostly for the as121 for the glim right. only for okay. as121 oh very good okay well thank you i i think you answered all the questions for now good okay awesome so uh sunil uh are you ready Hi, Hillary? Yes, I hear a Hillary. Who's that? You you hear Jose. I hear Jose. Okay. This young gentleman that just spoke, uh, they have a wind tunnel, right? Yes. And we have a wind tunnel that we've been using. And we have airplane flights and seats that they could bring them down. Are they at Clearwater High School? Where are they in Pinellas? Clearwater is correct, sir. Okay, yes. Down here at Farragut, we have flights every day, and we uh, uh, and you can bring them down. We make arrangements and put them in the back seat of the airplane. Oh, at Ammo Farragut, sir. Yes, sir. And okay. we have and we have a wind tunnel here. We've been using uh, and and we have a three D printer down here. Oh, very good, sir. Where do you what airport do you fly out of, sir? Albert Witted, sir. Oh, Albert. Witted. Okay, very good. Okay. Oh, very cool. Thank you. I'll uh, if you could pass your contact information to Hillary. Uh, We'll have a good hold of you. Yeah, yeah. We're here uh, most every day, and uh, we, that's uh, what we do in the morning. It's our flight program. We take our students down flying. So uh, we'd be more than happy to, to help you and, and see that everything works out. But, Rob, we've been working the wind tunnel uh, for the last year and a half now. And uh, the as far as flying and getting people in the back seat, uh, we have, we would really invite you down to, uh, at your convenience to uh, go flying with us. Oh, very good, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Great. And, and I'll mute out so I won't interrupt Hillary. Okay. Oh. <laughs> no worries. You're good. Okay. I'll um, mute me out, or I I just hit mute. Okay. Okay, um, Brittany, are you are you okay to go? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, positive. We have everybody on the flight sim. Kids take off. Like if you give them a little bit a leeway and let them go, they've completely figured it out. It's like the ultimate uh, video game. The so flight sims are really good. Um, the lectures good. It's a lot of like notes at the very beginning. Um, they're just not used to that, but that's because they've never taken college classes before. Um, other than that, everything else is good. Okay. Is there anything you think you need from me or? 
Nope, I have, I mean, on the two days that we don't do lecture, um, we either do flight sim or fly kites or make kites or make some sort of paper airplane or design something or do Leonardo da Vinci stuff. Thanks, Heather. <laughs> um, but something like that. So everything's good on my side. Great. Cool. Well, thank you. Um, Walt, are you there? Walt, give a holler if you can hear me. Okay, forget that. Sunil, are you ready? You are unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So we have 15 students for AS120, and so far everything is going well. And uh, Mr. Professor Hester is doing a good job on that, and kids are enjoying it. Uh, as far as the SIM is concerned, we have a very strong security issue, something going on here. So, uh, but our tech department tried to install the SIM in one computer. So we are using it, so I'm projecting that computer on the screen, so it's working. But uh, the tech department is trying to uh, is trying to install in other computers too, so hopefully uh, all the students can uh, do that. So wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm sorry, Hildy. Um, you want seven more, right? <laughs> So uh, about the midterm, so our students are taking in on Tuesday. Now, I have one more question. Uh, when the professor is giving the lecture, um, the students are taking notes, but uh, just a security issue. Are there, uh, what if I give a copy of that PowerPoint? Is it, is it anything that they can help it or does it, uh, go bad with the security or some kind of policies about that or um, the the course however you guys want to handle it is totally up to you and as long as the students are taking that course then that is their material to access so okay, it, so it's okay. I thought uh, I thought it may work or may not I don't know uh, so and so far, everything is good. I mean, uh, uh, Professor Hester is coming day after tomorrow here. It's a couple of materials and things like that, so it should be, should be good. Uh, so, so far, good. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Um, so then all I have left are phone numbers, so 904-955-1369. Are you there? I'm here. Oh, is that you? Yeah. Oh. So you're on the phone and the... No, I'm not on the phone. Um, are you, whom are you talking uh, to? 1369 is me. 1369, that's who I'm talking to. Yeah, that's okay. it's Ray. Sorry, Hillary. Oh, no worries. So, Neil, I'm going to mute you. Uh, okay. Okay, go for it, Ray. Okay, the, uh, the primary things that we have that are um, probably issues, I'll just start with that. Uh, the only thing that I have is the Duval County School over there at uh, Robert E. Lee. Uh, the problem that I have there is computers. They have no uh, access or minimal access, should I say, to it. So simulation for me is basically off of one computer. It's my personal. Um, the only thing that I have issues with that is flight gear does not run very well on Mac. Um, that's the one that I utilize mostly. Um, as far as positives, though, um, currently we're uh, doing uh, projects right now to where I have them building truss assemblies uh, for fuselage and then the aircraft structure itself. Um, it's actually a pretty good project. If you go out to a local store anywhere, you buy those little bamboo skewers. Uh, you can get them for about $1.57 for a uh, pack of about 100 I buy about mm, approximately about $20 worth, just no big deal. Uh, take those and then you can utilize it with either hot glue guns or you can use it with uh, masking tape or scotch tape. Um, 
just uh, do the joints for them, and then they can do the uh, diagonal and vertical and um, uh, longeron portions of it on the truss assemblies. Uh, some of them have ventured off this year and actually started doing uh, um, uh, forms for it and then trying to put a skin on it this year. So uh, it's been going pretty well as far as that goes. Uh, just an idea uh, for others that might want to try to do something a little off off key, I guess. Um, we also tried to do the, uh, the Da Vinci project where we actually did the helicopter and uh, let it fly through the, uh, through the air in the classroom as well the uh, uh, paper airplanes, which worked out pretty well. The uh, two simu uh, the simulators that I have in Keystone have worked uh, worked great. It's kind of hard to keep them off of it. Um, most of them are starting to do their patterns, and they're actually flying it uh, a little better than what we started at first. I think before it just started as just a video game, and now it's turning into a little bit more where we're um, I'm being a little bit more stringent on them for following bounce patterns. So been working pretty well so far okay there's a um if you look on canvas there is another version of flight gear it is of lesser quality so it's usually easier to run it on canvas oh, okay so just okay oh hey oh sorry speaking of canvas i, I kind of forgot this one just off the top of my head on canvas when we log into that for um the students themselves the only problem that i've had with that is uh Instead of putting the uh, quizzes and the uh, tests on Canvas itself, um, is there any way to actually enter in uh, scores that we've handed out the uh, paper test to and put it in there? Because right now with Duval County Schools, they're having a really hard time with giving the uh, contractors um, access to uh, DCS. So for us, the only way that I can go about keeping a grade for them, I'm having to go through individuals and just basically tell them they're great because we can't access any of their systems. On Canvas, you can set up uh, a grading, like rubric, and then you can put the point system on there and all that. And then you oh, okay. publish the grades for each student. So yes. Okay, I'll take a look at that when we get off then. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's actually, it's pretty user friendly. Just look up um, grades and then you're, you're publishing them. And then you can add different assignments okay. and that kind of thing. Yeah, well, the assignment portions of them I saw, and then I tried to do the quiz, and it had it to where we had to actually uh, push the quiz through it, and then they could log in and take it online. And I didn't know whether that was the, uh, the way that they were getting a grade on that or how it was going about with it. So I'll look at the rubrics, and if anything else should happen, I'll just call you offline. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty user-friendly. Just kind of mess around. I'm sure you can figure it out, but if you can't. Okay, perfect. Okay, cool, thanks. Perfect, you got it. Um, so next is uh, 954-242-8712. I'm gonna unmute you, you. Can you hear me? Yeah, this is, yeah, this is Walt. Uh, I'm kind of hybrid here, Hillary, on the phone here. Uh, things are going okay. I'm uh, Central Florida Aerospace Academy. I have 31 students in AF120, and uh, we we already have a uh, sim lab with 24 uh, simulators in it, and uh, we're you know we've integrated that in fairly well. Uh, class is going okay. It took a little longer than I anticipated to do the uh, uh, enrollment process. That was uh, kind of an ordeal along the last, but we got that squared away. Uh, one question I had is uh, that you mentioned about uh, making site visits. Are we on that schedule? Let me verify. Mm -hmm. Are you co-teaching with anyone, Walt? Uh, no. Yes, you are. What is your um? What are your class times, real quick? I start at seven in the morning. I have two uh, sessions up through about eight thirty, eight forty-five. Okay, and so those are your two AS one twenty classes. Yes. Okay, so I am going to visit two other professors within the next three weeks or so. And then what I'll do is 
probably in a week I will send you an email and then we can arrange a time and a day that you would like me to come. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. All right. And one more phone number of 708-516-9841. I'm going to unmute that person and see if they answer. You are unmuted. Uh, Dave Root. Hi there. Hi, uh, Dave Root up in uh, Chicago suburb, up in Illinois. Um, things are going real well this semester. Uh, my ninth and 10th grade enrollment um, about doubled from last year. Um, I have one section this semester of AS120 and one of uh, AS121. Um, I got lucky with the computer lab this year. I'm in there at my classroom full time, and then I have like kind of a workshop lab too. Um, I guess uh, one question I had was with the Glime online, we have just updated a bunch of our software and stuff, and they're switching browsers, all that. So I've been finding out certain things don't work. Um, sometimes every Riddle's website, for example, gets completely blocked by our firewalls, uh, you know, but um, so how do they access the Glime online? Because I used to just have the software. Do we have, is there like a handout or something that I could pull off the internet or? Um, what I'll do is I'll make a quick video and I'll post it on the AS121 website. Okay, cool. And then, you All right, can, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, because we just used to have the software, but when they re image the computers, that's gone and it's a little outdated anyway. I think it was like the 2012 stuff. Um, other than that, nothing really to report up here. I'm taking 35 of my students down um, to Illinois State University on Friday for an engineering competition. Um, and one of the events is flight endurance, so they have to build some sort of flying contraption. We usually win that because we're one of the only tools in uh, Illinois that has an aviation program. But all I have. Okay, cool. And uh, thank you. Raymond, uh, if I'm going to take you offline real quick, I just want to get your class times because you're one of those people that I'm going to visit. Unless you left. Oh, okay. Ray, you there? Yep, I'm here. Can I just get your class times real quick? One more time. Okay, Hillary, sorry. Can I just get your, your class time? My class time? Oh, Correct. okay. Like, um, for which school? Which school you want to go to? Uh, whichever one you would like. Oh, I don't care. Um, the uh, Keystone classes I have from um, approximately about 720 until uh, eight, about 818. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which day you want to do that on? Um, I'll email you so we can discuss a, a date and time. Well, just a date, really. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank. And you got it. Um, Ravel, what we're doing is just going around real quick and saying a good, like a high and a low. So, like something that you're really happy with, something that may need some more work. Uh, um. <laughs> Uh, a good is being able to collaborate with the co-teacher when I'm not sure about things. So that's very helpful that I have, you know, art with. We, we can really uh, work, to, work together really well. Um, a low is I still don't have um, flight gear up and working, and the students were really excited about that, and unfortunately I can't get it up and working. So that's probably the only thing right now. But everything else is really good getting the hang of it slowly all coming together okay um yeah it seems like that's a lot of people's problem is the simulator stuff so 
I'll, I'll make that more of a priority, definitely. Because I'm not 100% familiar with flight gear, so I'm only so tech savvy, unfortunately. Oh, no problem. We did have the tech guys look at it at the school, and um, unfortunately, the school that we're at is a really old, old school, and the computers are not up to date, so flight gear is, I think, I believe it's kind of an older system, so with the two being so old, it's kind of like a dinosaur almost. Yeah. But other than that, everything is good. But I um, was also um, wanted to know, um, I did have a question. I should have wrote it down because I forgot. Just never mind. But Hillary, <laughs> Hillary, um, when are you setting up the classes to come visit? Um, sometime, I'll probably get down to Miami sometime next month. Okay, so you're coming, you're going to come, actually come into the class. Correct. Okay, perfect. Yeah, you're stuck with me for at least an hour or so. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so you'll just get with us, uh, you'll email me with the time and the date. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. All right. Sounds good. Okay, cool. Was there anything else that I missed because I was, I just got on to the meeting? Not really. We're just kind of discussing uh, where everyone is because I can only, you know, interact with so many people at once. So we're kind of just sharing like best practices and something that may need a little work. So this is kind of more of an open forum, but nothing in particular you missed. Okay, perfect. Alrighty, thank you, Hillary. Cool, thanks. And then uh, John, you ready to go? I am. All right, um, we saved the best to last. Okay, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to do this. So I have I, I made a little PowerPoint, but I don't want to keep everybody in. I don't want to make it too detailed because it can be complicated. So how, how would you suggest I do this? Let's see. Um, you can. I can just fly through the PowerPoint. You want to just do that, or you can email it to me real quick, and I'll kind of go through it. I think you should be able to kind of steal my screen. Okay, well, I hit share screen. Yeah, and then you like ask me for it and I confirm and then we can see your computer screen. Okay. And so while you're doing that, I just wanna spit out that the next meeting will then be next Tuesday, but that's just if you guys kind of have any questions or if you wanna chat and if I have any updates, then I'll do that then. And then November 3rd and I'll take a, a winner to, see if we can either have someone present like John's about to do or we'll see if we just do like a high and a low thing. But if you guys have any ideas or anything different that you would like to accomplish, then we can do that. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes. Uh, Freddie Paul from Public Springs. I don't think I've been to one of these before. Hi, can you get your name out one more time? Trey Paul. It might be under Julian, J-U-L-I-A-N, P-A-U-L. So we're just going through highs and lows. If you want. Just with the program? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a high and a low? Um, low would be, it starts with the negative stuff, but I guess a low would be <clears throat> students who are not used to the level of effort they have to put in to maintain a grade that they're used to getting in other classes in AS120. And that's, you know, they just have to do some growing up, you know, things they're not used to doing, but um, and that's a good thing, but that would be a low. And what about a high now? Um, a high, um, I think they're very interested in the program and I think it's opened a lot of their eyes to not just aviation, but all the fields associated with it. And I really 
the end of the day, I really don't think that they had ever thought that they could even possibly be in a, in a program of study like that. Um, I think I think it's broadened their horizons a lot, and they really enjoy the content. I mean, they really enjoy the aviation stuff. I mean, they really do. Um, it's a struggle for some of them, but um, hey, they're asking questions. They're asking me questions, bringing me stuff that they've seen on the internet. You know, watching YouTube videos. And, um, it's a, it's a good thing. A lot of a lot of good feedback there. Good. Okay, well, thanks. Thank you, thank you. Um, I don't know, uh, are you available for like tech help or what is this mostly, I guess? Uh, this meeting is kind of just to, to give you any updates to make sure that you feel like you have a connection to the Gates uh, you know, Aerospace Institute to make sure that you're, you, you feel like you're on track to make sure you you're comfortable to make sure that we're all on the same page. So okay. it's really just communications. I'm not here to, to really monitor you. I'm kind of just here to help. Thanks. I guess everything's uh, going well with us so far. Good. All right. Well, I guess I'll check you out then. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then John, all right, we're limiting you to like, 10 minutes. <laughs> All that? All right. There's no way I can do this in 10 minutes, but okay. Just kidding. I'll However talk long it. you need. Oh, I'm going to fly through it, but okay. Let me, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. I can see it. How about everybody else? Can I stay for some of this? Of course. You're very okay. welcome to be here. Okay, this is just going to be a quick uh, session on helicopter aerodynamics. It can be pretty involved, so I, I don't want to get too detailed because it is complicated, some of it. It's just an exposure, but I try to cover everything because there is a lot involved. So I'll just play through it, stop me if you have a question, and we'll go from there, okay? So just for general aerodynamic purposes, a lot of the same things that apply to airplanes also apply to the helicopter. Um, if you do AS120 or you took a pilot pilot course, you know this formula, so all that still applies. No big deal. Uh, the only difference really with induced drag is that there's a segment of induced drag that's created by the helicopter even when it's not going anywhere, if it's just hovering because of the way the air flows through the rotor. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Right, and, and here's what it is. Um, helicopter actually has two different relative winds because the blades turning create a relative wind and then there's an added segment of relative wind when the helicopter actually starts moving. The helicopter can move in one direction, but the blades are always moving in a plane, so you have two relative winds. And what happens is the average relative wind, which you see on the screen here, is the portion that creates, uh, that we measure the total lift from, and the relative wind that bends down from the back of the blade is what creates the drag on a rotating, rotating airflow. Very simple terms, but um, let's get that. All right, little terminology that you may need to know to talk about helicopter aerodynamics. Uh, the important one is the flight path velocity, this part right here, which I'll explain in a second, and rotational relative wind, which I'll talk about in a sec. Is that me? Is that me making that noise? I'm not sure. I'm going to mute me, and I'm going to mute everybody except you. Okay. All right. So flight path velocity, I'll tell you about in a sec, and then induced flow. Uh, when the, a rotating airfoil or the disc is rotating in the helicopter, the airflow goes from the front of the rotor disc and then it goes down through the back of the rotor disc when the helicopter starts moving. So I'll show you what that looks like in a sec. But flight path velocity for you airplane flyers is the same as true airspeed in an airplane. Remember the rotor on a helicopter is the wing. So the flight path velocity is the equivalent of true airspeed. But the difference is with a rotor disc, if you have any forward motion on the helicopter, you have increased speed on the right-hand side because you have a, the blades rotating to the front while you're moving forward. But on the other side, the left-hand side, the blades are going towards the back of the helicopter while you're moving forward. So there's a component of directional airspeed involved in that as well. I know it's kind of confusing. Um, and the speed of the blade itself or the rotor disc itself is lower at the hub like a propeller on an airplane because it's 
covering the smallest distance and fastest at the tip. I'll skip over the big tails. Okay, here's where um, a hel helicopter is a little bit different as far as aerodynamic goes. I have more experience with a fully articulated rotor head, which is what you're looking at here. And that kind of rotor head means that each individual blade can do these things. They can flat, drag, and feather. Flat means they can move up and down uh, in the vertical plane. Uh, feather means like feathering a propeller on an airplane. And the, the drag means they can hunt forward and backward. And they do that, they adjust for speed caused by aerodynamic pressures, which I'll talk about in a minute. And I'll skip semi-rigid and rigid for now. All right, so here's what the typical, not atypical, but a rotor head looks like. And you have three different hinges that on this rotor head are actually elastomeric, or like rubber bearings. This hinge right here is a feathering hinge. So when a pilot moves the collective inside the helicopter, this post right here moves all four blades at the same time, and they rotate around that hinge right there. Here's the, uh, the hub of the blade, or the, the end of the blade. So this control rod changes the pitch of the blade and feathers around that bearing right there. Uh, because of Coriolis force, which I'll talk about in a minute, the blades sometimes tend to accelerate and decelerate in the plane that they're rotating in. And this, this damper right here helps to slow down that hunting so they don't accelerate too fast. It's like a damper. It is a damper. And then you have the flapping hinge, which is in here. It's a horizontal hinge. because The blade flaps up and down. Right, all because of aerodynamic forces, which I haven't talked about yet. Okay, here's the good stuff. Rotational relative wind. When the blades are actually turning, you have this rotational relative wind just because the blade is moving. Uh, but the airflow is different in the front of the rotor blade than it is in the back. So you actually have two different resultant relative winds. The angle of attack is greater in the front, and it's smaller in the back. But the important thing for this slide is that you have a relative wind just because the blade is rotating, even if you're sitting on the ground, not doing anything. Now, when helicopters hovering, the actual flow of the air goes from top to bottom like this. And for your airplane drivers, this is important because the rotor blades produce a wake vortice, just like large airplane uh, when it's creating a lift. So if you're near a helicopter that's hovering, in an airplane, it could potentially flip you over if it's a small airplane. Um, you don't see the vortices here, but all the air is flowing from the top to the bottom, as you see here. And then because the tip of the blade is spinning faster, you have a greater downwash near the tips than you do at the hub. All right, um, once the helicopter starts moving, uh, you have airflow that goes, instead of going straight down, like you see here, it actually goes more horizontal, but it goes through the back half of the rotor disc and that's what changes the angle of attack back here. So you have a different angle of attack in the back half of the disc than you do in the front of the disc. And that's just a matter of control for the pilot with the, with the cyclic control. I'm sorry I'm flying through this, but I have to. All right. One of the uh, idiosyncrasies of a helicopter is that when it's hovering, because it has a tail rotor, the tail rotor produces the thrust that wants to move the helicopter to the side, and that's called translating tendency or drift. So if you're just hovering someplace, um, you have an anti-torque rotor, which keeps the helicopter straight. When the main rotor is turning counterclockwise in this particular example, the body of the helicopter wants to spin to the right. And you correct for that with the anti-torque rotor, which is controlled by anti-torque pedals. There's no rudder pedal, it's an anti-torque pedal. So at a hover, the helicopter wants to move to the right. And this can be offset sometimes by having a rotor mast that's tilted one degree to the left, or if you mount the transmission at an angle so the entire rotor head tilts to the left and that keeps the helicopter steady. And then I threw this picture in because on this particular helicopter, the rotor mast is also tilted five degrees forward. And if you notice, it's sitting kind of nose up. So when this helicopter actually gets in flight and starts going to high speed flight, where you tilt the rotor disc forward, then the helicopter is actually level. Normally, high-speed flight in a helicopter is very uncomfortable because you're pointing down towards the ground. But in this helicopter, the nose is pointing up when you're sitting on the ground. All right. Um, depending who makes the helicopter, the blade either spins to the left or to the right. Um, on American helicopters, the blades spin counterclockwise if you view them from the top, uh, which means that when you add power and you increase torque, you have to increase the pedal usage. It's kind of the monkey with the proverbial football type of maneuver because the power requir 
requirements are always changing. So you have to constantly use pitch or collective and anti-torque pedals. All right, coning is particular helicopters. Um, the blades typically have a weight on the end, which preserves inertia during auto rotation when the engine fails. Uh, but the centrifugal force when they're turning is what gives them the rigidity. Unfortunately, when they start taking on weight, they increase lift and they tend to do this. They either go into this cone shape like you see on the left-hand side, or they bend like you see over here on the right-hand side. That's called coning. And that just shows that the helicopter is carrying weight. The blades are carrying weight. It's carrying a load. Uh, Coriolis effect, when the, hel the blades do that, what you're seeing here, the center of mass, can I move this? Yes. The center of mass of the blade moves towards the center, towards the hub, and then the blade wants to spin faster. And the damper that I showed you earlier is what keeps the blade from going too fast forward or back. But, you know, of course, they all do this in turn as they rotate around the helicopter. So why do they flap? They flap because you have a condition called the symmetry of lift. If you look at this helicopter from the top, assume it's moving forward, you have this advancing half of the blade over here is moving in the forward direction, and this half of the blade over here is moving towards the rear. So if you take the tip speed of this blade over here, which in this case is 120, Let's see our cut there. speed. Okay, the rotational velocity of the blade is 480 knots. That's how fast the tip is moving around. If the helicopter is moving forward at 120 knots, then you have a total speed of 600 knots on this half of the rotor disc, moving in the same direction as the helicopter. But on this half of the rotor disc, since the blade's coming this way, you have a total wind velocity of 360 knots. That creates a dissymmetry. So the blade on this side wants to rise up. You have more lift. And when it rises up, decreases the angle of attack like a wing on an airplane when it raises up. Um, so that helps the helicopter from rolling to the left. It's self-correcting. But this also leads to one of the drawbacks of the helicopter. The limiting factor is forward speed. If you're going too fast in a forward direction, this half of the rotor blade will stall. The helicopter is limited by high speed, unlike an airplane, which is limited by low speed because of the symmetry of lift. Right, that leads to something called retreating blade stall. And since the rotor disc is a gyroscope, if this half of the blade stalls, you don't feel the effects of it until 90 degrees further in rotation, which is right here. So the back of the helicopter moves down, the nose goes up, and the helicopter rolls if you exceed the V and E speed. All right, gyroscopic precession, because it is a gyroscope, you can actually make if you want to pitch forward, if you want to go forward or fast, you have to make that input to the blade on the right-hand side of the helicopter because it doesn't take effect until that blade moves 90 degrees forward. So when I push forward on the cyclic in the helicopter, this blade over here on the right pitches down. But when it gets over here to the front, then the rotor disc pitches down. Sorry I'm blazing through this, but... Right, I'll skip that one. Transfer flow. Okay, our rotation is the last one. Uh, this is a typical turbine, power turbine gauge in a helicopter with a rotor needle. There's two needles here. If the engine quits, the turbine needle goes all the way to zero, and then the pilot manages the collective or the pitch of the blade to keep the rotor speed within this green area right here. The only thing keeping the blades turning is the air moving up through the rotor as the helicopter descends. If you get outside this uh, green arc, you may not be able to recover enough rotor speed to cushion your um, descent at the bottom. So it's all energy management. It's hard to describe without actually showing your helicopter. So let's stop the share. Oh, here we go. That's awesome. <laughs> that was a five-minute version of a 30-minute presentation. That's <laughs> like, I, I mean, I personally kept up, but that's just me because I'm, like, really interested in it. But I loved it. That was great. Yay. Well, I'm glad you liked it. All right, did we lose everybody in the process? We, I think we just lost some of the phone people because they couldn't watch. They can't see, yeah. So, yeah, but, I mean, this was pretty cool for me. <laughs> it, it's hard to take all that in without taking time to explain it, but, all right. Well, there was that. Well, I didn't mean to cut you short. That's I just right. figured that I'm, we only have people for so long, you know, their attention. Oh, I understand. Yeah. No problem. 
Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. I do have a question about Glime. Other than the actual Glime assignments that we give them for AS121, are there other um, ways that we can direct them towards the Glime book just in the meantime, in between Glime assignments? What I usually do is I have them, depending on how much time we have, I look over the book and I see kind of what we're discussing, and then I actually have them write out the question and the correct answer. Oh, they write it out? Yeah, I have them write it out because what we'll do, so right now we're doing chapters like one and three, uh, because it's like the first section still. So okay. chapter one is the airplane, and, and then it goes into aerodynamics, which we haven't really covered yet. So I make them write out the questions and then the correct answer, and that will be like a homework assignment. Okay. Um, and so then whenever, whatever chapters we're discussing, that's what I have them do. And chapter three is uh, like radio communications, airports, airspace. So it's so vast that I, I kind of section them up and have them personally write it out and then do the correct answer. For some students, if they don't do homework, then it kind of is a bummer. Yeah, some of mine don't. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've only done one GLIME assignment. We're coming, coming up on the section one exam, but GLIME chapter three is the only one that was assigned mm -hmm. so far. Yeah, I, I've been having them do part of chapter one also because that's the airplane, like labeling the airplane, what does the rudder do, that kind of thing. Okay. So I have them do part of it. And then when you go into Glime, you can section off what you want to ask, you know, what chapters, and then it should break down even further. And the chapter one will have like three different parts. So see if that's an option. I know that was on, I think it was the commercial test. I'm not sure about the private. Yeah, I'll have to look forward and see. Okay, okay, I'll look into that. Okay. Don't worry. Um, I just have one quick question regarding Zoom and recording Zoom. How do I get it to like my co-teacher? How can he? How can I send it to him? The recording. I've been having the the recordings because they are so very long. Canvas will not let me upload them because they're too big. If I if we go over like twenty minutes, big. So I've been putting it on YouTube. So I will send you the link. So if I you know, say for instance, I record something that I want the class oh. to see and I'm not gonna be there that day, how would I get it to him so he can see it? So when you uh, start this Zoom, when you can make your own, and then it should give you an option to record. Okay, it gives me that option, but when I go to, I don't know how to send, is it via email or like how do you send it? It should save it to your file. Like it should, when I finish the meetings, it pops up and it says, mm -hmm. you know, your Zoom has been saved to, it pretty much just dates it for me. Okay. And so then, and then it, it saves it. And then when he logs into his Zoom, he just goes to my meeting and he can access my file. He may have to log in under your name, so you can either give him your password and have it saved to your account, or I upload it to YouTube. Okay. Okay, I'll try that. Or I'm, I'm going to try to email it to him. Sometimes the videos are so long that your email is not... Oh. Okay, thank you, Hillary. You're welcome. All right, well, thanks for hanging on for those of you who did. I appreciate it. Um, so I'll see you, I'll see some of you next Tuesday, and I'll see some of you November 3rd. And I'll be here every Tuesday. It's like a <laughs> great sitcom. <laughs> okay, enjoy the rest of the week. Yeah, you too. Bye, everybody.